Hello everyone, welcome to Decode with Shiknaikya, the podcast where we explore the journeys and insights of pioneers and change makers who will challenge norms and inspire others. This is our very first episode and we couldn't be more than excited to kick off this series with someone whose work exemplifies visionary leadership. So as the CEO of Mercedes-Benz Research and Development India, he has not only driven the tech industry, you know, the world's most iconic brand, but also inspired countless individuals. Please join me with a warmly, Mr. Manu Sati. Thank you very much. To start off, Manu sir, we would love to know about your journey. What sparked your interest in automotive industry and what path led to Mercedes Benz? Any early influence which helped shape your career? Thank you, Kasha, and congratulations for writing our first e code. I think it's going to be an exciting series for all the young folks studying in the uh, to interact with a lot of your guests. I'm very honored and happy to be the first one in the series. An interesting question to start with is well. Um, I graduated in 1995. I was back in Mumbai at Hobson Communication and uh, started off straight uh, out of the campus working for a German automotive year one company. Now, typically, when campus selection happens, the excitement of getting a job, I think, uh, takes over uh, way more than, at least during our times, way more than the choice of the industry that you carry. I'm still very happy looking back three decades later that I'm part of the automotive industry, uh, but it happened by chance. Uh, but the one thing that I did ensure is to fall in line with the industry and the life of engineering that I've chosen. And over time, I came to love mobility as a concept. I came to love the challenges that the mobility space provides. And uh, over the years, I had a chance to switch from the German TO1 company that I worked for uh, into the most iconic brand, like you said, since Benz, the brand that invented the car and the brand that shaped the company. Mercedes Benz is synonymous with luxury and cutting edge innovation. How do you nurture this innovation driven culture at MBRDI? What does innovation basically mean to you and Mercedes Benz as a brand? Oh, that's a very interesting question, especially to a company that invented the car and is set to reinvent it again 138 years later as model keeps changing around us. You can imagine that in today's world, for a business like ours to thrive, survive and thrive for more than 100 years, one of the key mantras should be, and therefore we are also glad that innovation is so much part of our journey over the last century and continues to travel. So innovation really grow our past, is driving our present and will continue to drive our future as well. Especially interesting for me is uh, the journey of the global captain in the RDI or r Limited in India. We just celebrated 28 years, so we have a short history to boast of right now. But I think the last decade or so of our history from India has also been a lot about innovation. Um, to survive and thrive and to make sure that India engineering comes through uh, in the global scheme of things, we decided that we're going to rely a lot on innovation. Now, how we see it seems a culture of innovation just in that come by the snap of the finger. Uh, it takes way more than that. It takes a lot of work with the young engineers to try and look at them and problem solving as a skill. And to be able to think of the box. And I think we've consistently done that over the last decade or so. Ten years ago, MBR literally had no patent filings at Spotify. Today, ten years later, we have more than 2,000 patent filings out of India for the company. A good 13 to 15 percent of all the filings for the company on a global scale comes from India. So we've really moved the needle when it comes to innovation, and along with it, hundreds of engineers, Indian and young engineers, are proud to be filing patents and discovering new things today. Luckily for us, the world of mobility does pose a lot of problems for us to solve. So it's, a, it's an open field where uh, this really thrive in the question. 
So as you said, sir, now India has become the power hub of tech talent. So definitely the tech uh, youth in India are currently also contributing to the global strategy of Mercedes Benz. Are there any specific projects that you are working where India's impact has been specially shown? It has been significant. With a large team that is working on India for Mercedes, the largest team of in Germany actually, uh, you can easily imagine that the Indian engineers have contributions in literally all fields of work, starting from digital mechanical engineering, where physics based simulations and other developments are helping us to refine the car and vision developing in the virtual world. To the world of uh, in car IT and software, software that runs the electronic control units, to the out car IT, the IT that runs the cloud. To the enterprise IT that runs our HR and finance systems. There's a lot of uh, contributions out of MDRDI towards your success. So much so that we proudly say there's a little bit of India to pay in the other cities. The Mercedes Benz has been in the forefront of using AI, data, machine learning, and data analytics. Can you share a few things so that Mercedes Benz leverages this technology? in creation of new vehicles, safety features, or enhanced customer experience? If you're a trip like you are, you cannot get away with discussions on the AI. It's I know that a lot of your students love the subject and also study them. Show that uh, these deep tech subjects also influence the automaker. Uh, Mercedes Benz has been using technology in various forms over the last several decades, uh, including the latest ones that have had to propel the product forward, but also solve a lot of our customer features and solutions. Um, artificial intelligence is one such uh, in all its forms and avatars, uh, technology that we are using in the last years. We use it primarily to define and enhance customer experience in the car. To name a few, today with the camera as a sensor within the car, it is really able to intuitively see what the driver, the co passenger, or the other passengers want to do in the car, depending on their gestures, and help you take intuitive actions in the car. You could, by the way of a hand, uh, allow the sunroof to open. You could just reach out your love box for the lights to come on. You could just look at one of your rear windows before you adjust them, and the gaze detection. In the car helps us to understand which mirror left or right the driver is looking at. And these are just some features that are you know, supporting the customer today. But you know, luxury features, so to say, where you get this feeling of wow, right? How did that magic happen? And I think AI is really helping us to deliver that magic with the customers. So, anyways, add to this, um, since we're sitting on an abundance of data from the car itself, the working of the car as it drives around. And we also rely on big data and analytics to simply understand our product better for the sake of the customers. So I really think Mercedes Benz is smartly putting to use both of these technologies for the better of the product and for better customer experience. With your years some experience, what skills or qualities are essential for engineers or professionals who are out there to set their mark in automotive industry or name any tech intensive? And that's a very interesting question, especially for the young viewers to be watching our podcast. They're checking out and getting into the industry. It's an interesting place, but also phase of excitement, nervousness. First of all, I'd say fall in love with the industry that you choose to work with. Understanding it's working, so it's one primary skill that we'd expect out of every engineer who wants to make a mark. Second, in today's world, the dynamics are so high and things are changing so fast around us. One needs to have a very high learning quotient, um, by which I mean an ability to unlearn new things, accept and learn new things at a very fast pace. In these two fundamental attributes, of course, combined with you know, some technical knowledge in the area of engineering that uh, he or she is close to would really help somebody to make a mark. 
Uh, I've seen now the industry for 30 years. We have hired thousands of engineers over the last years and a few years. And I can tell you the one that really stand out that this combination of very strong fundamental technical skills and a very, very high learning quotient. But today, it's also a world where we are all not working in silos. We have to cross over and meet people, stakeholders especially. Up the hierarchy, companies, could be peers who are working with you, could be a technical review panel for which you're supposed to explain something. And uh, communication skills and storytelling skills also come in very handy. Uh, I mentioned this especially because we don't come out of uh, homes or universities running these skills automatically. They're usually not part of the curriculum. But if one really makes an attempt to pick up some of these excellent storytelling communication skills, I think it will hold in whatever you said in the industry in the years to come. How does MBRDA collaborate with academic institutes? Does students and researchers have an opportunity to work with your team on groundbreaking projects that you are making? Absolutely. I mean, we thrive in the Indian academia, in the academic scene that we have. We have uh, very solid collaborations that we have right now, especially with the IITs and they sort of panel over the IAC panel in the Institute of Science. Some fundamental areas of research that we'd like to see in the local industry is being done in strong collaboration with the academia. To name a few, already in this week we've been working with IITs on human body modeling physics. Um, and on the other extreme, our very recent collaborations have been announced because we believe quantum computing, neuro quantum computing will have significant role to play in the auto industry. Uh, we also decided to partner up with academia on some of these things. What I usually like is that uh, some academia come really forward sending their teaching staff over and student over for short term internships with us. I love this because it helps to bridge the gap between academia and industry in a very strong fashion. I still think academia has a very strong thing to bring on the table when it comes to theoretical knowledge and research. And industry has a strong uh, contribution to bringing the table, which is the line of business and problem statements that we have to solve. So this match is certainly going to happen when we come together. There's still a long way we can we go in India when it comes to collaborations, but I think India has started on the right, right foot, and I'm expecting more to follow the list. So I guess after this event, even students from Triple ID are interested to work with Mercedes. We are also looking forward to collaborate with the, I mean, work with Mercedes and BRD. I'm excited to the ideas. In an era of AI and cyber communications, where data privacy and cyber security are key concerns, now how do you, how does MBRDI address these issues by guaranteeing customer safety and trust? AI certainly has come with uh, some packages. As we see, there are concerns around privacy, there are concerns about uh, responsible usage of AI. And uh, Mercedes Benz globally has been working on this very, very stringently over the last years, uh, especially on the privacy part, because you know, our cars were used by millions of customers worldwide. And as they drive and interact with the car, they're generating a lot of data. And uh, being the European company, GDPR is very much relevant to all that we do, that last work we do globally. And therefore, MDRDA2 in India has been diligently working on making sure that the use of AI is done in a responsible way, is done keeping in mind data privacy and all the regulations that are pertaining to AI privacy. This is done with, uh, on one hand, some knowledge, but also with the help of uh, tools and techniques that really help as an AI developer to have those guardrails within which you can develop responsible AI. You also mentioned uh, Ashna, the topic of cybersecurity because in today's world where we talk about the software defined vehicle SDV, the pronounced role of software also comes along with the threat that in some way could hack into your car. A little bit like flat and furious auto threat that you see in a control over a control over vehicle and you know able to do different things. And therefore cybersecurity does play an extremely important role. I think our networks are very secure within the car. Our, our software is very secure. The encryption that is used is of the highest grade. 
and the test that we do on our cloud software will also apply to the so customers can be safe to express uh, because the cyber security actually really takes place. Looking forward, what could we see the opportunities for automotive R&D in India for the next five years? How can India fit into this global landscape of transforming the automation, I mean automotive industry? That's, that's going to be, I think, a, a defining decade in the next 10 to 15 years of uh, India engineering playing a role in transforming the automotive industry. For a simple reason, when we have you know, boiled the down as a software defined vehicle and it has no sort of software progress, uh, you automatically can conclude that uh, there's going to be a pronounced role of Indian engineering in the transformation that the auto industry is going through. And uh, so it depends, it's a case in point. Um, MBRDI and its digital engineers are contributing heavily to this transformation right now. The size, the depth, uh, and the value out of uh, the India office is already showing on how important the role the Indian ecosystem can play. Additionally, I'm also part of the NASROM's engineering R&D circle. Also contributing to the automotive GCC, Global Capability Center ecosystem that I'm part of. And what I see all around me is more dependence on India and Indian engineers when it comes to software defined things. There's going to be, this is going to be the case, I think, at least for the next decade or more, until we really conquer the challenges of the SV, right? That includes hyperdynamic cars, that includes autonomous vehicles, but also includes the kind of software that we need as mobility shifts from internal combustion to electric and battery management is going to be driven by software as well. India yeah, is doing pretty well there. Um, I think we still need millions of engineers, the best that you can get uh, for solving the world's uh, software problems. Is there any piece of advice that you wish you would receive when you start out? So, any words of wisdom for a listeners who wants to become the next CEO of any big brands? <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, and I'm sure there's enough out there. Um, I'm only going to add to that or repeat one of them. Uh, now, I'll go back to my own journey. I really think um, being humble helps. I really think um, submitting yourself to the problem helps. Uh, giving it your all helps. And to have a very high learning quotient helps. I want us to have the confidence that India can really play and Indian engineers can really play significant role in changing the world. Now, however, bombastic that statement we say in real history, um, that the impact that we can live as the world transforms right now on the engineering side is going to be significant if only we have the skills and the confidence that's needed on the table. So, if you're talking and if our viewers are learning engineers, I'd simply tell them to work hard focus on the basics and then come up with this open mind to the industry you have you can take on this problem statements and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Seth. It is really an honor to host you and and it is like quite insightful and incredible that how MBRDI is contributing to India as well as global automotive industry. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you too for my side. Congratulations on this first podcast and I wish you a great series coming ahead. And we're looking forward to watching more. Thank you, sir. And to our listeners, thank you for joining on this journey. We are thrilled to kickstart Deep Road Trip Ledia with such a dynamic guest. And we look forward to bring more such guests and make some inspiring conversation. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned.